Divya Ranganath is an experienced PR and marketing leader with a demonstrated history of working in the information technology and services industry. She is a strong marketing professional skilled in product marketing, category marketing, media relations, corporate comms, market research management, digital marketing and also channel marketing. She loves describing herself best as a storyteller and a risk taker and she has a never say die spirit and before we talk to her about how change when accepted can transform your career life and most importantly our outlook let us do the first rapid fire round so divya all i am going to do is uh, i am going to ask you a few random words and you may respond mm-hmm. to them by sharing what comes to your mind first without thinking much okay so here comes the first word it is future inevitable <laughs> freedom undefined i mean who sets the boundaries right <laughs> fitness paramount fun uh much needed recreation yeah fantasy teleporting <laughs> i want to do that <laughs> food mom's khana i think at this day friendship oh it's a lifeline for me big time play yeah nice play uh, i think everyone has it in them they just have to recognize it mm fragrance flowers okay. i prefer them all natural <laughs> <laughs> good one and last one for the first rapid fire freebies good to have but only if it's given with love <laughs> <laughs> fair enough All right so thank you so much for participating in the first rapid fire round and uh, folks you have tuned into the guiding voice podcast series TGV the guiding voice for a better future i'm your host Navin Samala a fellow professional and a passionate learner on a mission to make the world a better place to live through the conversations that matter and conversations that add value to your life and to your career thank you so much for tuning in and divya hearty welcome to uh, the guiding voice super thrilled to have you join as a guest on the show today Thank you Naveen I have been following guiding guy uh, voice for some time now so could host to your team and uh, you know amazing amazing conversations and insights that I have to take from there so that's great all right thank you and on this note again I would like to uh, acknowledge the fact that uh, Deepika Trehan has been uh, connecting with all the wonderful leaders like you and Deepika once again thank you so much on behalf of uh, TGV and for this excellent collaboration with corporate diva and uh, divya let's uh, get started and uh, probably you can share or start with your success mantra as in the top 3 things that have attributed uh, to your success so far and which have helped you reach where you are today if i have to sum it up i think the way i would say is that uh, it's patience perseverance and uh, uh, an open mind to change i think these are you know very very critical and uh, these are things that have really really helped me in my career mhm awesome that was uh, crisp and clear uh, let's let's jump into the topic of uh, today's conversation which is about uh, uh, taking change positively and uh, making change work for us okay if i may call it so please share a personal experience wherein embracing change had a transformative impact on your career or life and how did it shape your outlook and mindset that's an interesting one and there are several ones actually that uh, i can share uh, navin to be honest i think uh, in this 20 21 years of my uh, career there have been multiple such opportunity so let me just give you a context to how it all began right i've always been someone who's always who's gone ahead and embraced change uh, as it come maybe because there was no one to tell me to do it otherwise right Mm-hmm. so there were two or three instances that solidified the theory in my very first job we had a solid foundation set for us uh, there was no big or small work defined so right from sending fax from a business center which was close by to uh, you know everyday media rounds to even attending new business pitches we were involved in everything mm. so i remember that one of the assignments that, that was given to me was to handle an end to end project um for successfully bringing in clients willing mm-hmm. to pro- conduct press conferences i was you know in pr back then uh so there was this huge event that was happening and on the sidelines of that event uh, we also had a nice press center and you know my boss said uh, 
you know, apart from the retainer that we were getting, we had kind of struck a deal with the client saying we will use the press con- uh, center for conducting press conferences for people attending it, like, you know, people presenting there uh, for all the exhibitors, basically. And uh, the, uh, you know, the job that was given to me was that, you know, it's a value added service, which means mm-hmm. extra income. So just go and pitch to whoever is there and, uh, you know, to all the exhibitors, about 250 of them. And see how many of them can actually sign up for this press conference. And then afterwards, of course, run it end to end, right? Mm, right yeah. from time to. And I was less than, you know, 10 months into this profession. So obviously, you know, it was a huge deal for me, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I was uh, obviously afraid. Uh, I will not say that, you know, it was an easy act for me. But mm. uh I said, okay, fine, challenge taken. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with it. Yeah. So I created the list, went ahead and spoke to multiple folks. You know, the first few of them were obviously rejections that I faced. You know, not all of them agreed. Um, And then afterwards, uh, you know, the mistake I had made initially was that I was going for the smaller guys. I kept on thinking that, you know, let me start from there and maybe once I, you know, go to the HMTs of the world, by then I would have developed some confidence, mm. right? And there were some really big names coming uh, mm-hmm. back then. The smaller ones, I realized, didn't really understand the need for utilizing a platform like this. So I did face rejections in the beginning. And then my boss said, you know, why are you not going for the uh, for the big guys, for the big guns? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. Let's try that. And uh, and the next set I pursued were the big ones, right? Mm. And interestingly, all the big ones that were present there, almost 40 of them mm-hmm. uh, agreed. Not, I wouldn't say all, but yeah, most almost 40 to 50 of them agreed to have a press conference and that was additional revenue that was coming to us. Yeah, And it was a huge success, right? So I think... At that time, one of the biggest lessons that I learned was never say no to an opportunity that is given to you, however far-fetched it may seem, right? You know, when you when an opportunity is presented, obviously, you will have your doubts of whether it will work, not work. But I think it's important for us to at least develop the attitude to say yes, you know, first hand. And then afterwards, figure out your ways, you know. There's this thing that, you know, uh, all of us in corporate diva keep thinking about saying that, you know, uh, you take that first step and the universe will guide you. Mm-hmm. Right? So there will yeah. be means and means and people who will guide you through it. But it's important for us to first take that up. Right. So that was a very important lesson. Mm. Yeah. Second nice. One actually, <laughs> it's, you, it's interesting. And, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to take a little more time in this particular question because just really great learnings that I had through this, mm. right? The second one that happened was in the midst of my career when uh, I had completed about nine years in PR mm-hmm. and uh, I was in an agency. Uh, somewhere I was feeling a little stagnated mm-hmm. and uh, the breakthrough came through, you know, a client of mine who said, you know, I just got to know about this corporate opportunity and it's a role which is slightly different from what you're doing, but would you like to apply? Mm-hmm. I said, okay, let me see. I think it seems interesting. But then at the same time, I also got another opportunity to head corporate communication, which was an obvious step for any PR professional yeah. who was moving from agency to a corporate. Uh, so this was a difficult situation uh, because the former meant I get into a broader and a completely new field, mm-hmm. while the latter was my own territory, right? So I would get to do the same set of activities, but for a different company. Yeah. Uh, what do you think I picked? Uh, second one? The corporate communications yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I picked. So it's interesting. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. It was yeah. short-lived though. Mm. So I picked that. I chose the latter. I refused the first offer, but just almost. Mm. Because what followed after that was uh, after I refused the offer, I had the team leader and the team manager reach out to me from Mm -hmm. the first organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, They actually literally, uh, uh, you know, saw something in me, which probably I didn't realize. Right. Uh, So they took the effort to educate me on the pros and cons of getting into a role like this. 
uh, and uh, you know i really owe it big to them because of what they did and they appealed to my basic urge for learning something new mm-hmm. right because i was always someone who uh, wanted to learn something new and so they kind of appealed to that part of it and guess what i took up the dog so mm. i finally went to the unknown territory and you know embraced that change mm. it was life changing simply because it was a completely new field uh, mm-hmm. from pr to developer marketing and within 3 months i was also handled uh, i was handed a product so um, and all the people around me were all product managers and product marketing managers from mm-hmm. mba and you know who had done mm. the mba from these schools and i was I the only one who from a different background so interesting opportunities and i think sometimes you know again a very big uh, lesson that i learned was you know you need to have uh, you know it is important for you to kind of you know see what requires a learning and unlearning never to be afraid to do that yeah and uh, during the course of it i think another thing i learned was you know i actually sought out a mentor and i think that's one very important uh, learning that i got uh, in my life that it's important to have a mentor because it was that mentor who literally taught me what product marketing was all about so amongst all those big product marketers out there i was a rookie and uh, this person really handheld and you know took me through the journey so you know seeking a mentor and you know taking the right advice is another lesson that i learned hmm interesting I, I, i think those are great examples uh, of embracing the change and the two having a positive outlook as such and now uh, let's talk about uh, people okay like let's let's assume if somebody is really motivated and they wanted to embrace change so which means can we proactively seek out change and create opportunities for growth and development in the careers as well as lives because many times change comes and we either embrace or we run away from it that's how it happens but can somebody proactively embrace change i would say very interesting yes because <laughs> i've seen uh, a lot of i mean you know uh, millennials um, people of our generation probably didn't have these opportunities or didn't have these kind of uh, a mindset i would say or the need to change so rapidly uh so whenever change hit us we kind of you know said okay fine let's let's you know see i so few of us took that up as a challenge few of us few of us probably just said okay we can't handle this change and move on but it's different for the current generation and i truly believe that you can prepare yourself for it partially at least right i mean there is a certain amount of preparation that you can do and then the rest of it is really the mindset i mean if i have to give any kind of a a uh, tip or an advice i would say that you know start small start with what you can do right so for example there was this uh, team member of mine uh, who came and said uh, ai you know is disruptive it's a you know there's this entire conversation about uh, it actually affecting marketing the most and content and so on and so forth so what do we do about it i said okay now do you know the extent to which it can disrupt marketing they didn't have an answer i said mm-hmm. start by first understanding that yeah. you know i mean you know blindly just going with what the market is saying is different but doing your own research to understand the depth at which uh, you know a particular solution can help or harm you is very important yeah. so understand pros and cons cons of it and at the same time being able to re- really take baby steps to learn it and then adopt it is is very important you know in your in your job profession another important thing to do is to upskill i think it's a must to in every profession i have really seen people not taking it too seriously but i believe that's very very important i think uh, ir- irrespective of which profession you are in upskilling is extremely important keeping abreast with change is very important uh, learning new skills is very important so that's something that i definitely feel is feel is a must have mm-hmm. let, let, let's uh, move to the next one because i was curious about the mindset part you mentioned about uh, it a bit so what role does this mindset play in embracing change and capitalizing on the opportunities it brings like and also uh, how can people 
cultivate a positive and growth oriented mindset uh, i think it's very important uh, because uh, you know it's uh, one of the biggest pitfalls is when one considers that they know it all so i see uh, that on one end a set of youngsters who are determined to learn put their hands into multiple projects try to go beyond their day jobs network heavily while cashing in on opportunities that come their way even if it is outside of their domain and on the other hand i see mid level career folks who go complacent and have to be nudged to upskill and try something new so i think it's important to really strike a balance be able to really take the right kind of uh, uh, decisions create a learning mindset i would say you know it's it's important really to create a learning mindset i always keep emphasizing that uh, you know it's important to research it's important to really focus on your development goals as much as on your immediate goals so it's not just about how much salary you'll get in 2 years or what position you'll be in 5 but it's also about what you have learned and unlearned to reach there and what difference has it made to your outlook in life so i think it's really really important to have that blur you know that kind of a mindset and also be very accepting of failures right i think uh, uh, if you fail all you have to do is just stand up dust yourself and start again i mean yeah uh, you know trust me you would have moved probably an inch closer practically but a my but miles closer in your mind when you do that right it's you feel that you have almost reached there when you have that kind of positive mindset so i think it's extremely important for us to accept failures as a part of the process and nothing more so i think uh, these are very very important uh, when you are actually building a mindset for change and of mm. course be consistent accountable yeah. right uh, we can't mm. allow to demotivate us so we should always have i have always had people around me who are constantly i mean of course there are naysayers i won't say that there are not and you will face some of those at every point of time but uh, i think it's also important to try and uh, surround yourself proactively with people who can you know guide you and at the same time kind of push you push your boundaries so i think that's also very important so yeah. finding right coach mentor mm-hmm. is equally important yeah, all right yeah so with that let's uh, also talk about the risk part because uh, change often involves taking risks and also stepping into the unknown which may result in fear instilling fear in the individuals so how can people overcome fear and embrace uncertainty to pursue meaningful change in their lives to be honest navin i have faced a lot of uh, these lives biggest challenges and changes that have come my way because i have remained unfazed and dealt with them with a very calm demeanor and an analytical mind and i'll tell you why uh i know it doesn't come easy right uh, uh it's not easy to really kind of say that yeah. okay, i'll get it to state of mind obviously not you can't achieve that state so uh, easily but if you're conscious of what you're getting into and have calmly calculated your moves based on the pros and cons and have an open mind to the unknowns as much as to the knowns you will always be prepared better so i think it's really very important uh, part of you know a, a conscious effort that is being made to really uh, understand what is you know even if change comes to you automatically or unknown unknowingly i think it's just important for us to have a very calm uh, you know demeanor and be able to uh you know like i say i always kind of uh, uh, you know break it into multiple uh, goals and say okay fine i know that you know this is the larger picture this is the large challenge uh, i know if i think about you know the largeness of it i will obviously get uh, you know fear is going to hit me but let me break it down mm. okay what is the most important and immediate thing that i can address Yeah. And then afterwards you know one after the other you know things will happen. So I think it's just a matter of and that's the reason analytical mind is important. And for that <laughs> your analytical mind to work you need to be calm, right? So I think it's a it's just a way you kind of you know create uh, your own path towards it but I feel that it's worked a lot for me and I would always advise that you know people 
think of it uh, in a you know in that manner and also i think fear most importantly why does fear happen right why does fear come it comes from reject, rejection right so it's important to accept rejection as part of the learning process so that you don't really kind of fear it anymore so i mm. think that's one thing that you know i've learned saying that okay you're rejected yeah. fine you know accept it it's just one one more thing but there are right. multiple other it's not it's not your end it's yeah. just one one step towards it so yeah. i think that's important and and rejection also helps us prepare better next time i, yeah, I can't agree with you on that yeah hmm. so okay, yeah let, let's move ahead and talk about the importance of this um, uh, continuous adaptation and learning because change is an ongoing process and people say change is the only constant in this world so what are yeah. some effective strategies for uh, lifelong learning and also staying agile in a rapidly evolving world <clears throat> i would say that uh, know that opportunities are not by chance it's it's a little bit of a philosophical you know spiritual yeah. but i think uh, nothing really happens through chance right i mean there is a definite part to it in a way you can you actually create them because of whatever xyz you do word spreads opportunities come your way or even if failure happens it is because of xyz actions of yours right so opportunities are not by chance so it is important for you to first understand that um second is i think try to have multiple paths right your goals are not finite right. you have mm. multiple goals in your life so why do you think that the path to those goals should be finite so mm. those should also multiple they should also be many interestingly there was a beautiful quote that i actually read it's by an author called jennifer richi payet and it says that your career is like a garden it can hold an assortment of life's energy that yields a bounty for you right mm, so it mm. has assortment of life's energy it's not one single you know plant out there so grow your garden is what i would say wow super fabulous this has been wonderful conversation let's uh, add some more spice to the episode i'm going to kick off the second rapid fire round uh, divya if you are <laughs> okay let's do it <laughs> okay sure. all right so here comes the first question if you could have one gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it what would it say to keep walking keep learning keep walking it's a little boring but i think it's very important <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you were to live someone else's life who would you choose so oh, interestingly i read about steve jobs uh, so steve jobs but with a little more empathy <laughs> 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 that's all somebody else is giving me that message steve jobs with empathy okay okay describe yeah. yourself in just one word i think i believe uh, i mean i believe in fact that uh, i'm like the phoenix because of mm. the multiple challenges uh, i failed multiple times i've risen multiple times i've faced challenges and i i won't say that i'm the only one in the world who has done that simply because i think everyone goes through it but uh, you know i have kind of uh, molded my thinking to believe that i'm a phoenix and that works and that always helps rising from the ashes awesome rising from the ashes <laughs> <laughs> and what is the weirdest thing that her, that you have ever eaten i've seen a lot of it i've never had it thank god for it <laughs> and i'm i really don't want to describe them and <laughs> you know uh, no uh it is the weirdest of things but no i yeah. never I, I can imagine i can imagine probably you're talking about east part of uh, yes. the world <laughs> okay yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah and <laughs> and any secret that you would like to share with our audience secret or fun fact or hidden talent hidden talent okay i i do sing not many of them uh, were aware even recently i think in my organization i just kind of you know performed and they were all like surprise thing oh my god like you know why did you even choose this profession you should become a singer i'm like okay mm. <laughs> so I, I, not many know uh, yeah that's i think secrets at all shouldn't be shared right why why are they called secrets <laughs> <laughs> then they are no longer called secrets <laughs> okay here comes the last one for rapid fire what is one electronic gadget that you would like to see or invent yourself i told you i love telephoning uh. anyone want 
to invent a teleporting machine if I have all the investment I'll put it in that because <laughs> I I really want a teleporting machine where I can just think and then I'm dead <laughs> you know because I love traveling so yeah. anything that will allow me to travel in a jiffy I'd love mm. that mm 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 yeah there will be huge demand in fact uh, more than 80% of guests are seeking the same thing like teleportation device or teleportation mode <laughs> right <laughs> Okay. I guess yeah. Right. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. Let's flip back to the mainstream. And mm-hmm. uh, finally what actionable advice or tips would you give to the audience who are seeking to embrace change and transform their careers, lives and outlooks? I think uh, uh like I said, I I talked about you know upskilling. I talked yeah. about uh, finding your own opportunities because like I said, opportunities are not by chance. So uh it's important that uh, we kind of find our opportunities don't wait for them and be the change or rather create them and if change yeah. creeps up on to you of course face it with strength you know with your smartness it's important to really uh, face them as well i've always felt that when you find yourself at crossroads and have to take a decision um you know there are two things that uh, that are important one is you have to determine the value of the change uh when i say determine the value of the change it's important for you to really assess you know how big is this change how much impact will it have on my life and career like i said you know understand your pros and cons and what is the value that will bring to my life right mm. it's a very important overall purpose because sometimes we think very short term so it's important for you to you know uh, really give a little bit of a long term uh, outlook and uh, you know understand it from that point of view uh, so i think this is this is what i would say that apart from all the other things that i mentioned before i think really mm. uh, understanding the value of change uh, change that is coming your way you know looking at your pros and cons and of course uh, face it with all the strength yeah. and intelligence that you have so give it a thought why it is happening rather than just worrying about how it is going to impact you right awesome absolutely all right so thank you thank you for such a wonderful uh, set of tips and uh, uh, finally before i let you go please share uh, how was your experience being hosted on the guiding voice platform how oh, excellent i think uh, like i mentioned it's been uh, you know i've been following this uh, for quite some time and uh, i've seen some very interesting conversations very insightful thoughts coming my way and uh, this experience has been similar and you know when i came on board i think yeah it's been a very easy smooth conversation where uh, it's just about speaking your mind and uh, speaking out of your experience so i appreciate you know namin and you know your team for really creating something like this uh, i think you've done an excellent job of uh, curating this particular podcast and i hope more and more people actually uh, listen in and uh, benefit from it Sure. Thank you so much, and thank you for being part of our journey. Thanks for your time as well, Divya. It was wonderful thank talking you. to you. Thank you, Divya and Ravi. All the very best. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, so, friends, that was our episode with uh, Divya Rangana. And before we move into the trivia section, here's a request to you: please subscribe to us in case if you haven't done already. If you are listening to this episode on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, request you to. leave a rating and review as well so that it will help us reach wider audience and if you have loved this episode and found the conversation useful please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who can benefit from the guiding voice thank you so much in advance now it's the time for the trivia segment and uh, today's trivia is about change management you know the term change management was popularized in the 1990s but it has its roots in earlier management theories and practices You know this 70 20 10 rule is often uh, referenced in change management and it suggests that uh, 70% of the learning and development should come from on the job experiences and uh, 20% from social interactions and mentoring and uh, 10% from the formal training so now it's time for me to hear from you on how change has impacted your life positively and how you have embraced the change with a positive mindset and what kind of role has your mindset played in terms of adapting to the change and transforming your career or life positively so looking forward to your comments if you are watching this episode on youtube feel free to comment there or if you have found this episode on social media platform 
wherever you are found this go and comment there so thank you so much guys so that's all for today and thanks once again for tuning in and do not forget to share your topic recommendations as well as guest speaker suggestions either through social media or you can also email me at the guiding voice for you at gmail.com i'm your host navin savala a fellow professional and a passionate learner on a mission to make the world a better place to live and through the guiding voice we drive conversations that matter and conversations that add value to your life and to your career until next time bye bye see you all in the next episode with another wonderful guest take care